God seemed to work in spite of them and through mm. them and he loved them and he cared for them. And, and so he provided fertility, you know, in multiple cases. I mean, there was fertility issues with Sarah, with Rebecca, um, and with, um, mm -hmm. Rachel. Right. Um, and then ultimately with all of the things they were trying to do, trying to accomplish God, his sovereign will was happening through them. And this, this story is, I think we're really, a really vivid example of that. Like Rebecca is, is just clearly scheming. And the deeper we go into the story, the more it, to me, it does look like she's doing it for more personal reasons. And, um, and she's lifted up as this honored matriarch, you mm -hmm. know, in the Bible. I had a thought, I had that same thought too, April, while I was just reading this earlier and it's like, I'm praying this over my daughters, but I had this thought and you too, Brittany, I had this thought though, because we say that same prayer, um, in our Shabbat meal, but the next part is, may he give, give you the heart of Ruth, the faith of Mary and the righteousness of Christ as you build our family from generation to generation. And I was thinking of how after in that blessing, we named those matriarchs, there's now Ruth, who that ended really well, like God redeemed her, her situation. And then with the faith of Mary, it's almost, I don't know, I've never thought of this, so correct me if I'm wrong on this, but there's almost a redeeming of what um, Rebecca said, or how she reacted to the word of the Lord here, because when Mary heard the word of the Lord, she responded with, may it be to, uh, what was it? May it be to me as you say. Mm -hmm. And, but, and she didn't meddle with any of it. Like she stayed very submitted. I don't know. I don't know if that's a connection, but, um, and then it ends with the righteousness of Christ. So I don't know, kind of a cool redemption with that. Yeah, that's good. I just, I agree, Michelle. I think that's a really neat, it, I wonder, um, how like the Hebraic mind juxtaposes the counterparts that you're, that you're kind of drawing there. That's, that's really interesting. There's, there's a, something she says here that really strikes me. I'm curious what you guys think. So she uses very commanding language multiple times in the story. Mm -hmm. Like she tells Jacob to obey her. Um, mm -hmm. She's commanding him as if she has real authority over him. And mm -hmm. then she says, um, to him when, when he says, well, what, you know, what'll, what'll happen if I get caught? And then my father starts to curse me and Rebecca says, let the curse fall on me. Um, it's just interesting. Like I, I'm trying to like really think through the implications or what that says about the story or about the character of Rebecca, that she is very much taking authority. She can't take authority in like at the very end where she's in this conversation with Isaac about how miserable she is with her daughter-in-laws. But it's interesting that with, within her relation with Jacob, she does take authority and then she wants the curse to fall on her. Um, I, I don't know if that's even a possibility, but yeah. Um, what are we learning about Rebecca and how yeah, what, what, what does that make you, what kind of, what does that stir up for any of you about, about this character and what she do, what she's doing there in the story? Gosh, my nature is just to read it and be like, I had a woman, bagged over. <laughs> but the scripture keeps coming to mind and I can't recall where it is. We're studying Revelation, so it's got to be in there. Um, but I know it's all throughout the Bible. God searches the hearts and God knows where it is. And so it's so easy for me to look at her and just like, girl, chill. <laughs> but what what we don't see in this narrative is, was there further conversation between her and the Lord, right? Like to rebuttal almost what I said earlier, like we don't know if the Lord is like, and I'm going to use you, right? That part wasn't written down. <laughs> so I just think, the Lord knows her heart and for a mom to fight so fiercely, I have to believe that she had a pure heart. But then the story does read up me, me, me and selfishness. So it's so hard to like draw the line and say, this is, you know, I love stories like this because it makes you, it's that gray matter. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, it feels like for her to say, like, let the curse be on me, there is something there that is either that that she believes so deeply that she is willing to say something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have a hard time understanding the whole blessings and curse thing because it's like kind of, I don't know, maybe ethereal or something like that. But I feel like it was so real to them. 